This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Bennett will be here until midnight tonight. Larry Bubbles Brown. Hi, Larry. Hey, Alex. Hey, Larry. Hey. So uh, I uh, la- yesterday mo- last night uh, we're recording. This is being played a couple of weeks from when it happened, but I can pretend like it happened. A couple of weeks ago at night, <laughs> I get a the call. Phone rings at two o'clock in the morning, and it's. Will Durst, and I'm two tra- in the morning. Yeah, I've been well, tra- eleven his time. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to get a hold of Will Durst forever. Maybe it was one o'clock. I don't know, ten o'clock his time. And I said, "Hi, Will." He says, "Yeah, hi." And he actually sounded better than he sounded in a long time. And uh, I said, uh, "What are you calling for?" It's you know, it's one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't think about that. And I said, well, I'll call, I'll call you tomorrow, which is today, so I'll call him after we're through here. But um, I asked him how he was briefly, and he says he's starting to get some walking ability back in his leg. What have oh, you heard? Great. What have you heard? Anything? Well, uh, that's funny because he called me two days ago. and uh, How'd he sound? He sounded good, and he was talking about. He still said he had some work to do, but was hoping to get home home soon. So, uh, you know, uh, next month will be three years since the incident. Three years. He's been in, yeah. in a hospital bed. Yeah. No wonder he can't walk. You know, I mean, if I laid in bed for that long, I wouldn't be able to walk either. I have a hard enough time as it is now. But uh, you know, I mean, I am. Um, it sounded to me like he was a little more alert than he has been. You know? Yeah. And he just called you out of a clear blue sky, right? Called me out of the blue, and uh, I think I'm going to go over and try to visit him next week. So. Oh, good. I wish I could. But, uh, you know, I'm going to try and call him. But if you see him before I manage to get a hold of him, please give him my best. But it's, Yeah, it, sure. It, it was, he seemed a lot less groggy than he sounded in the past. He sounded much more alert. Uh, well, usually when you're in those places, aren't they pumping you full of drugs 24-7? Well, you know what happened? Here's what happened with, with, in case people don't know, Will was a regular on this show and still would be, and if, if I could get him to do it, you know, or if he was capable of doing it. And we've had him, you know, from the hospital bed doing a few things from time to time. So people out there probably want to know how he's doing. And it seems like he's he, something's something's positive now, because what happened was, for the longest time, and I, I've been having a big gripe against medicine lately. You know, another myth. If we want to talk about myths, is that doctors know everything. You know, that's <laughs> yeah, another myth, that, right? That they can make a diagnosis and it's correct. Okay, believe me, I'm a doctor. Anyway. Uh, it, so I mean I um, it 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 uh, kind of it was really weird. He couldn't walk on one leg. He had nothing but pain, so on and so forth. And they had been trying everything, and they said, "Well, we don't know if you'll ever walk again because you're not, you know." And then he said, "Well, would you do me a favor? Why don't you take an X-ray of the leg?" And they said, "Well, we're not going to find anything. We know what's he was just." humor me x-ray the leg so they x-rayed the leg and then they came back and went my god you've got this or that we can operate on that you'll probably be able to walk again this is two and a half years after he went into the hospital that's right they said they had a broken hip broken hip it turned out and they fixed it and now he's starting to walk again Wow. Jesus. And they yeah, thought it was a stroke, not a broken hip. 
Well, that, how about uh, yeah. how about a lawsuit? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm sure they did everything in the hospital to prevent a lawsuit. Well, we told him that might be blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but, it, you know, I mean, doctors are doing defensive medicine now. They don't want to get sued. So, you know, it, it, it's terrible. It's just terrible. But anyway, he looks like he's his leg's starting to work again. Well, if, uh, so it'd be, if he does stand up again, that's going to be a hell of a story. Oh, yeah, no kidding. And now he'll probably outlive all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be terrible to get a stroke? Go through uh, all of that. One of my th- one of my fears. Yeah, three years of. Well, I think that would bother me more than anything else. Uh, except that I don't have to get out of bed if I don't want to. Um, but uh, th- that would be worse than saying you're going to prison for three years. Yeah, I mean, it's a terrible, terrible thing to happen to you. But wouldn't it be even worse if you got a stroke? You went through three years of rehab. You're finally walking again. You're talking again. You're doing your day-to-day things. You're maybe a little slower than you were or whatever. And all of a sudden, you have another stroke. (laughs) I mean, you know, what's to prevent that? Exactly. Maybe, Maybe they have medicines now that you can take that kind of prevent a stroke in advance of getting the well, stroke. I think he had the kind that was caused by uh, high blood pressure, and you can definitely keep that under control. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a lot of us does, just don't go to hospitals. I mean, you don't like hospitals, do you? You don't like going no, to I the hate, doctor. No, I hate hospitals. Now, here's, here's what happened to, to Bubbles. Tell them what happened to you this week. Oh, I was going in for my cataract surgery, and actually my... Uh, they actually got backed up, and I said, <laughs> I'm thinking this is not something you kind of want to rush, and this is so I just said, well, let's let's just reschedule me. <laughs> Wait a minute, what was the problem? What, what, why did you decide to reschedule? Because uh, they were running behind, and they had I think I think the doctor, the surgeon had come in late to begin with. They do like several patients in a day. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I just thought, you know, I don't want to go and maybe they're in a bad mood, they're rushed. I don't want to go through that. So. No, I'll tell you what happens. What uh, I, It happened with my guy doing cataracts. He was, had, like Tuesdays for him was cataracts or us. You know, and he would schedule. Yeah, they do it on Tuesday. He, right? he would schedule 20 people. Yeah. You know, and he, just one right after the other. But he had exactly. done so many of these that he never fucked up, you know. So, I mean, I wouldn't have worried about that, but you're the one who... I probably should have gone through with it looking back, but uh, I'll get it, I'll get Cause it. Because when you wrote eventually. me back, you said your doctor bailed out on you. Yeah, I kinda, it was actually me that bailed out. <laughs> yeah, I think any time that you go to have it done, you're going to find there are maybe 10 people there, at least, you know. There were at least 10, yeah, and uh, I think it's a, they do it all day. and Yeah. And I think the... <laughs> What I just found out was the actual surgery in those is actually like 10 minutes. Oh, it's, it, it, it used to be a, a terrible operation. It used to be that you would do it and then you'd have to sleep on blocks at night for three months, you know, to keep your head from moving. You and had your head, put your head between sandbags or something? Something yeah. like that, yeah. And now you go in, uh, they uh, deaden your eyes with drops, and then they take you in. And they tell you to open your eyes, and they then start doing whatever they do, and all of a sudden your eye goes dark, you know, and then all of a sudden you get light again, and they put in the new lens. That's all they're doing. They're taking out one lens and putting in a new one. Right. Simplest operation they've got out there. Success rate, almost 100%. You know. And they're working on, I don't know if it's going to happen, they... They were trying drops that will dissolve the cataract, so they wouldn't even have to do surgery if these work. Oh wow, that's that's wonderful. See, medicine yeah. gets better and better and better and better. Yes, we're at the age where we're going to miss all the medical miracles. <laughs> yes, right. So anyway, I thought we'd have some fun today. I asked you to go get your almanac because you yeah. like you like to test me. I try to, if I, this is a noted personalities, entertainers of the past, I like to come up with these, because you're, you're like the only person that would know who some of these people are. Well, but, you know, uh, part of my problem is is that I'm, I'm 
in somewhat of la la land these days because I've been taking a certain drug and it makes me forget stuff. You know, like who who are you again? Anyway, we'll start off with uh, okay. Let's start off with somebody easy. Uh, okay. Oh my God, he was only uh, fifty years old when he died. Vic Morrow. Oh, Vic Morrow. Yeah. No, he died uh, making the movie of the uh, Twilight Zone. And right. He. It was a, a segment uh, directed by uh, John Landis. John Landis. And um, they were. There was a scene where he's supposed to take these two kids across a river. It's like a Vietnam thing or something. He's he's a very Vietnam, yeah. The story is he's a prejudiced guy and all of a sudden he finds himself in the middle of a war, you know. And he's supposed to cross this river and they brought a helicopter down to kind of put lights on him and do stuff like that, you know, he's supposed to be attacked by this helicopter. But it had a problem and it fell and crashed and the helicopter blades cut off his head. Yeah. And I don't know if the kids were hurt. The kids uh, were killed. The kids were killed too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's Vic Morrow. That, but he was also on like some kind of war show. I'm trying to remember. Combat. Combat. Yeah. yeah. And I think the uh, I think Alanis was wasn't he? At least they were talking about bringing him up on charges. And I it think was they definitely I, a I very they dangerous did, stunt. I but, think they did, but they didn't find him guilty. You know, right. anytime, anytime there's a uh, incident like this in a movie, they always fully investigate it. You know, I mean, like they're doing right now with Alec Baldwin and that shooting down in the, at the on the set of the movie he was producing. Um, you know, these are questions that have to be asked. You know, and sometimes it's the guy's fault, and sometimes it isn't. I mean, how culpable is a director? You know, he's being told the helicopter's safe. You can come in low and not hurt anybody and things like that. And then all of a sudden something goes wrong that he has nothing to do with. And all of a sudden he's up on charges because somebody's got to get blamed. Yeah. yeah. But that was that was the story with Vic Morrow. Okay, so I passed the first test today. You passed the first. Okay, how about uh, Sal Minio? Sal Minio uh, was uh, the place I remember him most for picture I remember him most for is Rebel Without a Cause where he played the uh, the kid, One of the, there were three of them, Natalie Wood James Dean and Sal Minio and they're kind of like outcasts at school and stuff like that and they hung out with each other and uh, it was, uh, Sal Minio was fine, he was, he was killed actually he was murdered and he was, uh, let's say four, he was 36 years old yeah, and, and I think uh, weren't they trying to rob him, or did they? Was it a gay bashing thing? He was stabbed. It wasn't a gay bashing, but he was stabbed by some criminal. And I think they found him later, many years later, through DNA. Uh, wow, wow. So anyway, that's Sal Minio. He also starred in some films like the Gene Krupa story, um, and he became a big star. He became a pretty good star after that. I th yeah, I thought he had a decent career, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he was gay, and in those days you really didn't say you were, you know? And uh, so he was kind of a closeted gay guy. And it was it was kind, kind of sad what happened to him, because he was a pretty, yeah, a pretty good sure. little actor, you know? Okay, uh, a name I've heard before, but Pola Negri. Pola Negri is a silent film star. I'm trying okay. to remember exactly what she did, but uh, I think was she in um, the Sheik with Rudolph Valentino? I don't know. I'm trying to remember what film she did. I don't. I, I, I was never a big fan of her, so I never followed her much. Uh, but um, uh, I do know the name. You know, silent film star. Does it say what film she was in? It does not. She'd live to be 90, though. <laughs> really? Really? Wow. Okay. All right. And I, okay. And, uh, and, let's see. And, uh, Max Sennett, which uh, I think he made Oh, absolutely. Producer, right? Absolutely. Max Sennett. Max Sennett, right. Ran uh, Max Sennett Studios, did Max Sennett Comedies. Uh, the most famous ones uh, that people here would remember was Our Gang. 
which later on television was called Little Rascals. Uh, that was a, those were Max Sennett comedies. I'm trying to remember if Laurel, yeah, Laurel and Hardy worked with Matt, Max Sennett as well. Uh, and uh, he was uh, he he lived to be pretty old himself. In fact, I think Shecky, my friend Shecky, went to his funeral in Hollywood. So anyway. okay, uh, let's see. He lived to be seventy-six. Oh, really? Yeah, not that old. Oh, okay. I say not that old because at my age, I like to think that uh, he was too, oh he was too young to die, you know. But seventy six is about the average age that people die at. You know? Yes, and we always talk about suicide. And this guy, I think, left one of our best, uh, George Sanders. George Sanders left one of the best um, uh, suicide notes of all time. It was short, but it was sweet, and it simply read. I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was George Sanders. You want a little English more? Actor, you, right? Yeah, you want a little more on George Sanders? Sure. His brother was Arthur Shields. <laughs> and Arthur Shields was also an actor. I don't know if oh, you remember. There was a there was a years ago there was, when I was younger there was a uh, advertising campaign. I don't know, can't remember even for what wine, but there was this guy who said, from the little old winemaker, me. And that was Arthur Shields. So Okay. Yeah. Well, it, uh, you think these people what? are like... He, wait, he wait, 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 wait a minute, hold, hold on a second. Who did I say that was the brother of? Uh, George Sanders. No, George Sanders' brother was... Oh, God. No, George Sanders' brother wasn't Arthur Shields. Arthur Shields was Barry Fitzgerald's brother. Who was... I'm trying to remember who uh, his brother was, George Sanders' brother was, but he was another famous actor. N not as famous as George Sanders, not as successful as George Sanders, uh, but I think he did something like played the saint in movies or something. Hold on a second. Let me look this up a second. George Sanders. Um, George. George. Uh, G O R G. Sanders, and that would be S A U N D E R S. George Sanders, American writer. What? That wasn't him. Actor. Hmm. No, that's just as an American writer. Okay, let me try spelling Sanders another way. How was it spelled there? How, how's it? Sanders? His, yeah. Uh, S A N D E R S. Oh, oh, A D E R S. Okay, I thought it was Saunders. Uh, George Sanders. Here we go. Yes, his brother was Tom Conway. Do you remember an actor named Tom Conway? I've heard that name. Yeah, I thought it was a cowboy actor or something. Yeah, he Tom Conway. Let me see here. What did he do? He. Um, they were born, by the way. You think of uh, of of George Sanders. As being born in Ru in England, right? He was mm -hmm. born in Saint Petersburg, Russia, and oh. um, uh, he was married to Magda Gabor, the Gabor <laughs> sisters' mother. Wow. Okay. All right. See. Okay. He died. He committed suicide when he was sixty-six. He wasn't that old. Yep. Yep. Uh, but uh, he, uh, the, his brother, Tom Conway, was in a, I Walked with a Zombie, and The Falcon is who he played in movies. And uh, let's see here. He was on a couple of TV shows here and there. But the, the Falcon was the main character he played in the movies. Okay, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Arthur Shields was Barry Fitzgerald's brother. Go ahead. Anyway. Okay, and... Uh this man died at 70. By, by the way, did, did I lose any points for that, by the way? <laughs> you have to take two points off. Yeah, okay, all right. Who? who, who? Uh, Telly Savalas. Died, died at 70. Had a good run for one. Telly Savalas. Yeah, yeah. I know who that is. It was it was Kojak. And it w I think that would be all he'd be known for, right? Well, actually, he was in a James Bond movie playing the villain. He was in um, uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, the only film 
made with uh, what's his name the the guy only made one film uh, and he played uh, Ernst Stavro Blofeld so okay uh, here's a name I heard an old comic make fun of her and I have no idea who she is Lily Pons God you know that name I know I know the name uh, and I think maybe was she a singer I think a singer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And I think she was an opera singer. Yes. Maybe that was it, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, she would appear on a lot of the TV shows in the 50s, you know, as a guest star singing opera. You know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Edith Piaf. Edith Piaf, great French chanteuse, uh, who if you ever heard her singing and her songs, I mean, they were, they were gut-wrenching. She would make you cry. She was just amazing. She had grown up a uh, very... So she wouldn't be known here? Oh, she was known here. She was very popular here, believe it or not. Really? And I she, never heard, no, she came I heard to, the name. I don't know. This, I is all, this is probably before you were born. This is all 50s, okay? Well, she died... In, she was 48. She died in 1963. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was 48 when she died? Kind of young, isn't it? Yeah, she she was poor when she was growing up, and she was she was kind of had this waifish quality to her, you know. And uh, I'm trying to remember the song I love of hers, uh, "No Regrets," um, is one of her big songs. And and if you, if you ever get a chance, try and listen to Edith Piaf. She's really her voice just makes you want to cry, you know. Wow! Because she sings with such passion and such pain. Yeah. Well, that's more than you need to know about Edith P. <laughs> Let's not forget George Papard. George Papard, yeah. I think a minor light in films, you know. Uh, he wound up uh, on TV playing a lot of TV roles. Uh, decent actor, you know, good yeoman actor. Uh, but I don't think he lived too long, did he? Uh, if there are 50... 56. Wow. What did he die of, does it say? Doesn't say, but I just have the name, the date they died and born. Wow. So that's a lot of, kind of like, like Irene Ryan from the Beverly Hillbilly. She died at 70. I thought she was 90 when she was on that show. It, yeah, no, she was a young actress, believe it or not, a comparatively young actress. Uh, and uh, it was like that woman on uh, on uh, what was that thing about the the three uh, the older women living together? Uh, uh, oh, the uh, Golden uh, Girls. Golden or? Girls, yeah. Uh, the old woman on that show was younger than some of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You you want to know the 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 great story that I have to tell you? And it's amazing. My memory's working okay today. Is Jesse Royce Landis? Do you know the the actress Jesse Royce Landis? No. Well, if I were to describe her, have you seen North by Northwest, the Hitchcock picture? Yeah. You know the woman who played his mother, Cary Grant's mother, was Jesse oh, okay. Royce Landis. When she made that movie, she played uh, uh, Cary Grant's mother and was two years younger than he was. Really? What? Yes. <laughs> she was always very matronly looking. You know? Yeah, she had a very stern look. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, uh, but she uh, that always I always remembered that, and I went, I wonder what she was feeling when uh, when she was working with Cary Grant and going, this guy's two years older than I am, and I'm playing his mother. How does that work? But I don't <laughs> think she thought that. I think she was thinking something else. Hey, good paycheck. <laughs> you know, I mean. What else are you going to think? You know, you take the work that you're offered. And uh, some people always played older than they were, and it's not a bad idea. That was a suggestion by Sean Connery once. He said, always play older than you are, then you will last in movies longer. Because That's people will always, point, yeah. Yeah, people always accept you as older. Um, and and you, you've got your chops still, and you can keep your wor working. And he did that. Um, he always started playing older than he actually was. So, yeah. Let's try one more. I think we got time for one more. I got about a, about a minute left here. Aldo Ray. Aldo Ray. He was a, an actor. 
He was actually, I believe, a sheriff of a city in California. Like I, I seem to think Stockton or Turlock or something like that. And he went into movies. He became an actor, and uh, uh, he uh, did. He did okay. You know, he was not. He was in a lot kind of, of stuff. Kind of a play, a tough guy, right? Tough guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was Aldo Ray. So now you know everything you need to know about Aldo Ray. Did it say anything about him being a sheriff anywhere? No, oh, okay. but uh, you've done very well in the quiz. <laughs> well, I, I try. I fake it as best I possibly can. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Bob. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, we'll I pick this up next time. I can't thank you enough for you joining us like this. It uh, gives me something to do with my miserable life. And Only me three too. people listen to this, but who cares? <laughs> anyway, talk to you later, Bubs. You will do. This is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? Hello. Let me just uh, move myself over just a tad here. Just, uh, and there we go. There we go. Let me put myself in the center. Hey, how you doing? It's uh, Friday. Thank God it's Friday because that means it's the last day of the week. And uh, I don't have to do another show until Monday. I guess, when we do our uh, pop-up show, right? Anyway, got a bunch of people. Boy, a lot of people waiting tonight to get on here. Son of a bitch. Hmm. Well, I guess I should just let them all in, right? Admit all. Okay, and then we can see them popping in here. Let me see here. There we go. There they go. There's Josh. Wheeler, and there's Kevin, and there is uh, uh, Charlie, and there is a, 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 uh, <laughs> Mr. Nunn. You put Ann Nunn up there, and I was going to call him Ann. My wife's computer. Yeah, your wife's computer. Hi, how are you, Mr. Nunn? I'm just great. Yeah, and Mr. Uh, Kevin, and Mr. Wallace, Hello. and Mr. Um, um, Josh Wheeler. Hello, Josh. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, doing good, how you doing? Yeah, I'm kind of sad that you're not going to be doing a show tonight. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> no, really, I mean, you did such a nice job for the last couple of weeks, uh, taking over for uh, for Jack. Of which, Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, maybe he'll give you some credit for having done it, you know, and thank you for it, because he should. Uh, and uh, I, we've got to find something to do with you, you know? And I, I don't know what. You know, people make yeah. su people make suggestions, but they're all the wrong suggestions. Oh, why don't you have him do Tuesday night? And I'm going, he's not available Tuesday. Have you asked him whether he wants to do Tuesday nights? You know. Uh, we've talked about maybe Saturday night. Um, we, you and I and uh, Patrick and Kevin get together once a week and and talk for a couple of hours and you were just suggesting maybe you could do a show just before that or something like that you know yeah maybe yeah. we'll have to have to look into it yeah i'm pretty limited because of my work schedule so yeah what i and what i was going to say is uh hell i'm so tired on friday night so maybe you just do this you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true but uh Anyway, Vernon, how are things going for you down there in Kentucky? You're not getting any of this hurricane, are you? Well, we're supposed to get some remnants of it uh, first part of next week, but it's just going to be a rain event, I think. Yeah, well, we everybody gets remnants. We're supposed to get remnants of it, too. Uh, I'm just glad my neighbor made it home before uh, I and uh, Ian uh, struck California. My neighbor next door to me bought a house in uh, New Smyrna Beach, earlier this year Wait a minute, did you say california no 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 new smyrna beach florida oh i thought you said california didn't he say california i thought he said california he, he said uh, california i, miss, I, I misspoke uh, okay. but yeah my neighbor next door bought a house down in new smyrna beach uh florida and uh, they probably got some rain i don't know about flooding but uh, they probably got some some rain but they're on the east coast they're just south of daytona beach yeah i haven't asked i haven't asked uh, albert how he's doing but i don't think his area was hit where he was 
Is he in Miami? No, no, he's uh, outside of. Miami. I don't know where he is exactly. Hmm. Let me, let me, let me see here. Let me look this up in my phone directory. See if I have a town on him, Albert Reynoso. Uh, let's see here. Um, Q R S S R R R R R S. Come on, Reynoso. Reynoso. There we go. Here we go. Where? Oh, there we go. Uh, he's in. Oh, he's in St. Lucie, Florida. Where's that? Port St. Lucie. Yeah, I think that's on the East Coast. On the East Coast. So would he have gotten it? He probably got some rain. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'll I'm, I'll call him tomorrow and see how he is. I want to make sure he's all right. And then we had. Uh, 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 let's see here. Oh, here comes Jeff. Okay, let me. Admit Jeff here. Um, yeah. Um, you know, it's just that uh, I, I'm, you know, I, are you all getting sick of seeing the news with the, nothing this, but this being the news? <laughs> you know, I, I, why don't they just rename MSNBC the Weather Channel, okay, and just leave it at that? Because that's what it was for the last four days. You know, I mean, how much do you have to, how much do you cover this sort of thing? Uh, yeah, Port, Lee, Port St. Lucie, Lucie, Lucie is just is, north of West Palm Beach. Yeah, it's it's probably got it's about yeah about way north of uh, Miami, south of Melbourne. So would it have gotten any of the? Uh... It looks like it would have. Wow. Yeah. Because that Lake uh, Ochi, Ochi Okeechobee, Lake Okeechobee. Lake Okeechobee. Okeechobee. Yeah, is right across from it. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I better, I bet, I better. Uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's best. He's, he's east of Fort Myers, so yeah. it went right across there. Let me see here. Uh, 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 let's see here. I go. Uh, let's see here. New message. Okay, a new message to Al Albert. You might have gotten uh, the, probably got the wind and the rain over there on the east side. It was probably knocked down from all the land. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons why, uh, you know, it, 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 you guys okay. Mm -hmm. Probably going to say, well, it's nice you ask now. Well, no, you know, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, I'll bet you, you know, in a, lo in a lot of cases, he may not even get his mail. May not have power. May yeah, not he have might power. not have power. Yeah, yeah. there, hear the mail oh. go out. Or he's going to tell you, oh, I'm fine, I'm sitting on the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, he's uh, uh, I, you know, so I'm I'm hoping he's okay, and then we have our friend over in uh, where do you call it? Uh, what's the name of the town again? Oh, I forgot now. No, I'm forgetting. your friend in Naples. Naples, yeah, yeah. So Naples got got a lot of flooding. He I got think. a lot of it. Got a lot of it. But I looked at you know his. Where Van Meyer lives? No, that's not where Dan Meyer lives. No. Okay, well, he's in Florida somewhere. Yeah, well, no, this is, uh, what's his name? Well, uh, I'm just, my mind is just gone. Mm -hmm. It's a trash. But anyway, so he, uh, um, I wrote him uh, the other day, and I asked him how he was doing, and uh, he wrote back, I don't know how he wrote back to me, because he, he, he didn't have electricity, but he wrote back and said that, uh, uh, he was okay. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Where where is that? God, I'm just I'm so out of it. I can't even operate this stuff anymore. Oh, forget it. Mm. This is ridiculous. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Um um, here we are. And then I want to go up here, and um, you know I'll have the once I see the name I'll go oh geez you know I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Uh, 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 Mark Thorner, Mark Thorner. You remember Mark? Oh, that's who it was that posted yeah. that he was safe. He yeah. marked it that he was safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark is, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty rough for him for a while there. So, you know, but uh, he, I mean, he got hit by it. I mean, if he was in, yeah. if he was in, uh, where is it again? Uh, uh, Naples. Yeah. Naples. Uh, he, uh, he got, he got the brunt of it. That, you know. 
not as bad as some other places. There's some other places that don't exist anymore, practically. You know. No. Mm. But you know how I feel about Florida. So I, uh, I, you know, I don't know. You're out in California, right, uh, Alan? Yes. And you're out in California, right, Kevin? Yep. Do you care about what's going on in Florida? Yes. You do care. Why? Yeah. Because it's part of the United States. There are people there. People's lives are being wiped out and everything. Yeah. And and then there was the hurricane. That's right. Yeah. I forgot that the other part was DeSantis. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, I mean, no, I mean, I don't like to see anybody go through misery. I mean, I've been through it myself with, you know, the uh, the earthquake in California many years ago, Paloma Prieta. What happened in Puerto Rico? Uh, I don't know, but Trump's going down to throw out paper towels. So. <laughs> 100 percent power 100 yeah 100 lost power yeah and um you know isn't it interesting though that desantis um today was saying how much he wanted he needs help from the federal government yeah right and this mm -hmm. is the guy who when we had the what was the storm that hit new sandy, jersey yeah. Sa sandy voted yeah. against money for it yeah same with these idiots in Texas, did the same thing. And when the hurricane hit a few years ago, they were begging for federal aid. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Isn't that hypocritical? You know, but uh, but to his credit, I think DeSantis, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, Biden came to his aid before he even asked, okay? And I think DeSantis credited him with doing a good job at helping him in, with the, uh, you know, taking care of this situation. That's because that's because Biden saw the storm coming and had to explain it to DeSantis. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so and uh, did it hit Mar-a-Lago? Is Mar-a-Lago still above above I ground? So oh, damn. It, it, no. The meme's been out on Facebook all day about had Ian, you had just one job. You didn't do it. What What did he say? Is this Trump? No, no. Everybody on Facebook posting this meme showing Mar-a-Lago standing there with no damage. Yeah. And it says, Ian, you had one job. <laughs> you didn't do it. I bet the sewer system for Miami didn't end up in the middle of his golf course. Yeah, well, his golf course is a sewer system, so, you know. But... Uh, is it, is it, he has a golf course on at Mar-a-Lago, right? Yes. Yeah, but there's one in Doral also, which is near Miami. Yeah, well, that's Doral was a right. famous golf course even yeah. before he had it, right? Yes. So yeah. what did he do? Did he buy it? Yep. Oh, okay. All right. So good for him. Yeah. You know, so. So Josh. He's uh, running it in the ground like he is all of his golf courses, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's a good businessman. Great businessman. Um, so anyway, Josh, uh, anything you want to talk about that's in the news? I mean, I'll just sit back and do nothing, and you can host the show. Well, I'm tired today. There hasn't really been. I haven't had a lot of news because of that hurricane coverage. Really, I well, mean, I haven't really. Well, haven't I do really have one thing. Very much. You have one thing, yes, Vernon. Yeah, uh, Mitch, Mc Mitch McConnell's actually on board with this. Uh, uh, legislation to prevent another uh, January 6th from happening by changing the um, Electoral Count Act. Yeah. Eliminating was, some of the ambiguity. The yesterday. Yeah. Really? What, what ambiguities? Well, they spell out in the revised law, they spell out that the vice president's role is purely ceremonial. Yeah. There's no question about oh, it. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good, and as it should be. Also, they're also changing the requirements for objecting. Instead of it being just one senator and one congressman, it has to be like a third of them have to yeah. have to raise an objection before they would have, uh, you know, split off between the House and Senate. Yeah. Well, here's what I think. I think we should just do away with the electoral college. I mean, why? Exactly. Why are we even? You that, know, that takes a constitutional amendment, though. Well, let, let, let's get to it. You know, I mean, it's been, it's insane. It is just insane. 
because what it's really saying is, but oh, it, yes, you're you, not, hmm? you're, what? You're not going. You're not. You're not going to get it ratified by three fourths of the states, though. No. Even if you pass it in Congress. Yeah. I'm. I. I. I know that, and I think that's ridiculous because we should have done away with it a long time ago. You know, I mean, it's it's insane. I mean, you don't have your vote isn't counted, really. You know, if if the majority of America, I mean, it happened with Trump. The majority yeah. of Americans voted for Hillary by what? Five thousand five. Three million was it? Five million. Three million. Five million. Votes. It was five million, I think. Was it? Yeah. I thought it was three. Five million votes, and she lost. Huh? Well, will you guys quit arguing among yourselves? Let's come up with an answer here. <laughs> no, I was agreeing with Charlie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Three. Okay. Whatever. She got more votes than he did, and he won. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. It's just not a system that works, and and my vote certainly doesn't mean shit, does it? You know, I hate having. See, I I sometimes just don't even go to vote because all that's going to happen is to begin with. I know how people are going to vote in this state. The state's always going to go Democratic, but I go down to my poll and I vote, and I'd like to think my vote counts, but it really doesn't. You know, like because California. It, it gets winnowed down to like 79 votes or whatever the electoral college vote is. And I, I, my vote is not counted. Same in California. Yeah. Well, you can move to Kentucky and then it might count more. What, why is that? Because Kentucky typically goes red. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, I mean, at least I would feel I was doing something, you know. But here, come on. <laughs> Yeah. I'm Marjorie hoping Charles Taylor. Booker will take out Rand Paul. Is it, is Rand, it Marjorie Rand, Taylor Green Rand from Cross. Kentucky? No, Georgia. I know. I'm just teasing you, Vernon. Yeah. No, Marjorie Trader Green. Is that yeah. who you're talking about? Yeah, Her it's husband a, filed for divorce. Yeah, it's a right to divorce state. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Oh. No, yeah, no. His, her husband is. Uh, did she file hmm. for divorce or did he? He did. He did. He did this time. She had filed previously and then withdrew it, and then, you know, several years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then he decided he had enough now. I, now. I can't imagine. I can't imagine why she's such a jewel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, she's uh, she's a uh, uh, you know. Uh, but all I'm saying is that you know if if. Uh, if my vote really counted, I'd care about voting, but it doesn't really count, you know. And uh, so I don't know, you know, I have no idea. Uh, At one time I was on board with that national popular vote interstate compact, but uh, with the Republicans controlling so many of the state legislatures, that's that's all but died out. There's, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, uh I, to begin with, there's another thing that bothers me, and I don't know how do you feel about how you feel about this, Josh. But you're you're the guy who does have opinions on these kind of things. I am uh, kind of against um, uh, primaries because you know primaries are pretty new, aren't they, Josh? I mean, they, I mean, relatively new. They're relative. I mean, in the form that we use now, yeah. But I mean, then every it's not in the Constitution that we have to have primaries, right? No, we don't. We don't have to. I mean, right. so you know, it's so, states run their own elections, so I suppose it's up to each state. Yeah, but but who benefits? You know? Who benefits from these primaries? The party. The parties. <clears throat> you know, the party should pay for them. The exactly. Thank you very much, Vernon. I've been saying that for years. Yeah. You know. What they get, uh, they get the, these uh, these elections, these primary elections going on, and they're costing the states for a fortune. Sometimes there's even a, a runoff, yep. and costs them even more money, and nobody pays for it except the public. And it's not it, what, what what you could do is just say, "Hey, a bunch of people want to be president." Okay, they go out. They there's no primaries. Mm -hmm. They they say I'm running. They go to the convention and they go to the convention and fight it out till they get a nominee. That's the way you kind of the way it used yeah. to be. Well, they could also do ranked choice voting in every state. 
Well, yeah, you know, here's who I want first, but if he doesn't get it, here's who I want second. You mean that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. you don't have to have primaries for the uh, different oh, oh, yeah, parties. Yeah, that, that, that's that runoffs, true. yeah. Yeah, that's you, just true. File, you just filed a run, and everybody, you vote for whoever's on the ticket. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I, it's, it, it, I just think that uh, the primaries are it cost a lot of money for the states to do, and uh, it, it's not it's not it's it just doesn't work for me you know but then again who cares what works for me or doesn't work for me but anyway um what was i going to say um i have nothing to say you know i mean i watch the news because i want to see what the news is and then i don't get any news i simply get a weather report you know, no news. and and I I I think that they a little overdid it this week, you know, I mean there is other news, and uh, a lot of things are happening with Russia and the Ukraine. That that's one thing, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. There's that whole uh, election in uh, Italy. It's hardly even been covered over here. Yeah, in which they elected the most right wing um, candidate that has ever been elected since Mussolini and considered on the par with Mussolini. You know, so what's that going to bring? You know, and, and yet we're not hearing about this. No, we're, you know, we're, oh, here, here's a, we, for the 84,000th time, we got to interview another human being who's been displaced. You know, and I feel sorry for them, but geez almighty, you know. And on top of that, if you don't think that I'm, being fair to MSNBC and these other organizations, all they're doing is using these people's misery for <coughs> ratings. Yep. Disaster porn. Disaster porn, exactly. Who, who disagrees with me? I thought Alan would at least, you know. I'm, I'm sorry, my speaker was blocked for a minute. What did you say? Well, I would say that uh, cool. Alan's an asshole. And... Right. Uh, <laughs> Every every coverage of you know one of those hurricanes is is the same. Well, it's, it's the always... way it's the way they do it. You know this 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 constantly getting in people's faces whose lives have been upended. And... Yeah, it's going to be you know the worst storm ever and the catastrophic surge like we've never seen before. And I, I mean, listen, I lived in Daytona Beach for a while and. No one gives a shit. Well, uh, well, I have. I'm serious. To, I have I'm serious. To, like when there's a hurricane, no one gives a shit. Well, with the Loma Prieta earthquake, I saw exactly what goes on. What happens is, they see uh, they go out to something like this, and then they look for the biggest pile of rubble they can find and stand in front of it. Yeah. And then I mean, it gives all America the wrong idea of how good or bad something might be. People just do whatever they got to do, and then they hope that it gets done with, so they can go back to work. Yes. Yeah. You know, most people, just because a hurricane came through, it doesn't mean they can take a whole month off and still get paid. Hey, people's lives have been upended, but they've been upended you know? by global warming is what's yeah. happening. I mean, this planet is starting to regurgitate, you know. Yeah, I did, I did pick that up on one of the shows that I watched that they said the Gulf of Mexico right now is about three degrees warmer than it was 10 years ago. And that's enough to make these hur hurricanes much more... Uh, aggressive exactly yeah uh, but you know uh, a guy like this and won't admit it's global warming it just came to bite him in the ass and he won't admit it mm. you know I mean that's that's the ridiculous part of it the fact is it is horrible and it is terrible and we got to start doing something about it and we don't do anything about it we just moan and groan California is on fire Okay, and then has the biggest heat wave they've had in years. Not just California. Uh, we flew through a really bad smoke when we went on our, our cruise to Alaska. But, uh, Oregon had a bunch of water Oregon as going well. on, too. Yep, yep. But what I'm saying is, and then you come out here and you got this, you know, these hurricanes. And then you go into the Midwest and you got major tornadoes and major cataclysmic weather events. It's the worst it's ever been. And somebody said, get used to this because this is the best it's going to be from here on. Yeah. You know, 
So, I mean, what do we do? Do we sit around and just cry our eyes out over what's going on in Florida? Or do we do something about it? Or at least attempt to do something about it? We still have time before we hit that tipping point, which I think they said is uh, 2030. Yeah. Uh, when uh, there's no going back. There's no fixing this, you know. Uh, but right now... It's half the state of Florida if we don't do something because it'll all be underwater. Will it be the bottom half? I hope. I really hope. I really hope. Actually, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The upper part's Miami okay. will be underwater. Uh, everything sorry. below Disney World, okay? You know. Absolutely. And then make Trump the uh, mayor of that area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him a pair of water wings and let him float around. Yeah. Absolutely. But, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, until we start realizing that this is global war. I mean, last night, Phil made another one of those stupid remarks. Well, <laughs> Phil's stupid remarks. Yeah, yeah, yeah same thing. Uh, uh, where he where he said, "Hey, you know something? Um, uh, this has been going on forever. Nothing new. Go global uh, uh, hurricanes are not new. No, of course they're not new. They just haven't been as fierce as this. The ferocity of the events have been overwhelming, and the number the number of hurricanes yeah. has been increasing. Yes, that too." Mm -hmm. In fact, last year, we had so many hurricanes, they had to start going with, yeah. what, numbers or something? Greek, yeah, Greek, Greek letters. letters. Greek letters or something, because we yeah. had got more than 26 storms. Yeah, mm. yeah. It, it, most of the time, they never got to Z, you know. Uh, let me see here. Oh, here comes, oops, what, what am I doing here? Hold on a second. Here comes Ray. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean, come on. It's, uh, you know. When, when are we going to sit down and say, hey, we got to start doing something? You know, it would be nice. But we're not, so what the hell. Hello, Ray. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you doing? Oh, okay. You know. Good. Yeah. I'm tired as usual. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's either, it's either I'm bored or i am got some kind of terminal illness. Or I've, uh, I've, 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 it's a uh, neurop, what was it? A peripheral, positional vertigo. Positional, yeah. Positional vertigo. Yeah, which is the most common answer for this. Have you had your, um, I, I don't want to be a doctor. I mean, have you had your thyroid? Check? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I take thyroid, I thyroid pills. Yeah. I, yeah, I take thyroid medicine. Yeah, okay. But my doctor doesn't think it's high enough that he gives me a, you know, a super duper whopper of a yeah amount, but it, it could be you know it could be it's changed. Yes, Alan. I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but as we get older, we get more tired, you know. And it could just be that you're yeah I noticed it could be just that you're getting a little older. <laughs> a little still, older. You, well, you 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 have you have a you have twice the sharp mind of Phil. And you're 20 years older than he is. Do I sound sharp still, or do I sound... Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah. sound any... You sound barely any different than you did 30 years ago. Oh, so I haven't... I have I, what you're that. saying is I haven't <laughs> matured. No, I mean in terms of your... Sh yeah, exactly, right. I yeah. No, I mean you're just as sharp as ever. Yeah, the timber of your voice is lower. Yes, you just but... Have a higher, yeah, it is lower, yeah. But I have a tendency. I have a tendency to, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, what the hell? I have a tendency. Well, it feels worse. It feels worse to you. I have than it a looks tendency to forget stuff. You know, it's a little harder for me to do stuff that I used to do. You know, it's probably that way for almost everybody. I, it yep. sucks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it it, but it's but yeah. it's right, Ray. Everybody on the show, with the exception of Josh, who's still young probably you know as we get older things get harder and not the right things. no they get softer <laughs> they get softer yeah they, they they almost are non-existent you know but well, i'm only 60 so oh youngster oh just a baby yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. well you know um yeah he's 20 22 years younger than i am Okay. How long? How long have has Gabnet been on now? About eighty Over years. Eight we're years. in our we're in our eightieth year now. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute! It seems like eighty years. Uh, 
No, we've been doing GabNet for about, yeah, eight years. It's our okay. eighth year. Yeah. So I was 52 when we first started calling. Awesome. Really? Wow. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah, see? See what I'm saying? You know, wow. I, w- I, wish you, I wish it weren't that way, but it is. It is. <laughs> I mean, we're lucky Holy. we all survived so far. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I, all I kept, I, I said to Marjorie tonight, I said, you know, this whole thing with this lightheadedness and stuff that I have, this positional vertigo that it probably is, if that's what it is, although I, my, my neurologist didn't think it was anything else, okay, I told him I'm tired a lot, and he said, that's positional vertigo. He thinks the incident I had that sent me to the emergency room was positional vertigo, but I don't think so, because I woke up nauseous, okay, and I had I, I had some tuna that night, okay, raw tuna. But wait a minute, let me finish. And and uh, I woke up and I was nauseous. And then when I lifted my head, I got even more nauseous. And that is not you don't wake up in the middle of the night with positional vertigo because you're lying down. It's when you yeah. get up that you get lightheaded, mm-hmm. you know. Right. So um, I, and my doctor finally, as I was walking out of the office, said to me. Well, you might be right. It might have it might have been food poisoning, but you have positional vertigo and go to physical therapy and do something about it. So, what have I done so far? Nothing. So. I had positional vertigo a few times, and they have you do this thing where you fall back and uh, you turn your head one weird. way, and then you turn your head the other. You have way. to do it every day for. A, a couple of weeks for about a, a few year times and a, a day yeah 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 <laughs> it, it works it actually gets rid of it eventually oh. really it is exhausting though that freaking vertigo i mean it just like so much effort because you're fucking you're fighting this constant feeling of feeling like shit well it's light lightheadedness wow. and it's it's uh, uh sometimes balance is a little off I, yeah. it's tiring because yeah. you're just so you know, I said to Marjorie, go. I said, if I have this to look forward to for the rest of my life, let it end next week, you know. <laughs> uh, but, you know. So. I don't know. I think you're pretty healthy. I guess. I, I hope I am, you know. I, I, I yeah. But, you know, you know what you live with? You want to hear depression. Folks, you want to hear some. Oh, this, yeah, this is. This, how many people are watching right now? This is. I want to see how much this drives it down. Alex's uh, medical corner. No, it's not Alex's <laughs> medical corner. That's not what we're going to be dealing with here. Uh, oh, 38 people are watching. Maybe I better not say anything because I don't want to get rid of them. What but I, but I was saying that, you, you know, what do I have to look forward to? You know, either I'm going to drop dead, mm. right? That's one thing to look forward to. Or Marjorie is going to drop dead. And then I'm alone. You know, boy, a lot to look forward to. Right? Your window's open pretty big. You're on the eighth floor. If Marjorie's <laughs> gone, you can just jump out the window. I don't want to go that way. Because you get about halfway down and you go, I don't think I <laughs> wanted to do this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's an old joke, by the way. Guy's A uh, guy decides to jump out of a building. And he jumps out of the building and it's like a 20-story building. As he gets to about the 10th floor, this person who looks at him and says, how's it going? He says, so far, so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, well mm-hmm. I was thinking about that the other day. It's like, who's going to die first? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, you know, I don't, and, and then I can't get a cat. Marjorie wants to get a cat. I'm afraid, first of all, the cat's going to try and jump out the window. I, yeah. And every time, the, you know, the, cat, the cats will like to do things like walk on the windowsill while the window's open or on the eighth floor. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to just go apoplectic, right? So that's one reason I don't want a cat. Either that or we got to put screens in the window, you know, which is going to be a, a full-time job. So anyway... But I said to Marjorie, I said, the main reason I don't want a cat is I love cats. I love them a lot. And they live to be, you know, I've had cats live to be 18 years old, you know. And that's fine, too. But I don't want to have something in this house that's looking at me and saying, you know, after you're gone, I'm still going to be here. (laughs) 
And then, of course, I'll look back at the cat and go, yeah, but who's going to feed you? Huh. Well, anyway, so I don't know. I guess I'll just spend the rest of my life being tired and cablungent, you know. Uh, Get a pet rock. It doesn't eat much. It, it, it looks at you, and when you're tired of it, you throw it out the window. No, I mean, I would love to have a cat. I really love cats. You know what I love? Marjor uh, Marjorie, Marjorie, uh, Ronnie, my ex-wife had one, uh, a serval. Have you seen these? Yeah. They're about this big. big. I mean, they're huge. Giant. They're, they're big. Uh, closer to the size of a dog than a cat. But it's like living with a jungle cat in your house. And there's and they're and if they're if they're not crappy, like uh, Ronnie's cat was an asshole. Okay, Oops. just an asshole. But my ex-girlfriend, Xanthi, she had one, and the cat was lovely, loving. I woke up in the morning, and it was lying on my chest, and this was like 25 pounds of cat, you know? <laughs> but I would love I would love a serval. Just love a serval. There, how, how about if you adopt an older cat, and that way the cat doesn't outlive you, or I don't know. We'll get one that's close to death, maybe. <laughs> Get, get one that's almost dying and get a whole bunch of them, one at, right after the other. Yeah. yeah. Get a cat that's uh, just a model, not real. Not a real cat. A yeah. robot yeah, you cat. You can look at it anytime you want. Well, you know, the most, uh, one of the most popular things on, on TikTok, does anybody use TikTok at all? Am I the hmm. only one here? Am I the only one trying to relive my youth by? I, I signed up for TikTok one time, and and all it was was these young, you know, female bodies uh, dancing, you know, these these uh, hoochie coochie type dancing. Yeah, and, like and, see, and and your like point, we see Adrian doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your, and your and your point is. <laughs> yeah, really. There's only so much of that you can take. Huh? Like yeah. six hours a day or something, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you got you got to live the rest of your life. Otherwise, you'd be staring at the at your damn uh, smartphone all day long. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, we haven't heard from Brian in the last couple of nights. Man. He said he's not feeling too good. Oh, really? He posted in the uh, chat. Oh, really? Wait a minute. Let me see here in the chat. I never read the chat, but <laughs> let me see here. Oh, Brian. Yeah, we talk a little. I have bit not been feeling well over the last couple of days. Maybe tonight. Oh, okay. Um, you know, but, uh, 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 you know, I, uh, uh, so, you know, I just, uh, it, you, you, you get to the point at my age, I, you know, because I have this great fear of death. So I think I wake up every morning afraid of it, you know, and that's not any way to live the last years of your life, right? You should live them like you're going to live forever. So that's my advice to all of you out there. Okay. Hmm. Anybody have uh, yes? Anybody have advice for me? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think everybody's afraid of death to some extent. It's just a matter of how much. Oh, mine's mine's. Uh, how can I put it? Uh, terrified. Terrifying. Yeah. Kevin sent me by mail last night because he couldn't send it by messenger because it was just too long. All right, this thing that the marching band, is that literally something that's written up for the marching bands or did somebody write that as a theory? It was another director that sent it to to the director, our director. Yeah, but I mean, it's how many notes you would play in a two minute segment. Notes, movements, yeah. all thoughts. Y yeah, yeah, but I mean. Responsibilities that, and all that, yeah. But that wasn't meant as, uh, as as a way to do it. That was just a meant to say, here's what you're doing. Here's what your kid's doing. Yeah. In a, in a little short show. Yeah. If you didn't think your kid was doing much, you're doing a lot. Yeah. Uh, you, it said how many notes they would play in that two minutes and, you know, how many yeah, steps how many they would take marching. What they have to process, what they have to process, all that stuff. Yeah. And this went on for like... If we double spaced it, it would have been what two pages, probably maybe longer than that. Yeah, it's so. pretty intense what they have to go through. So thank you for sending that to me. He had to ask me what my email was. I had your old email. That's why. 
<laughs> oh, that, that one, Ooh. yeah. That one, you know, there's some people, that, I have a couple of places where I've gone and tried to change that. And it's, do you know how hard it is to change your old email address on a lot of these sites? You know, uh, anyway. Um, I still have my original email that I signed up for, God, what, 20 years ago? Me too. Uh, yeah, me too. My first email address was, I think, uh, alex at hooked.net. <coughs> That was it. Was a company called Hooked, and they um, gave me an account, and they also became sponsors of mine. And well, my second email was on MSN.com, which doesn't exist anymore. Well, that was uh, that was Microsoft. Yeah. Was it Microsoft? Yeah. Yeah. And um, um, well, what you what, what was the one that they had? What was the one you used to get a? They always had a. CD that they or floppy disk they would give you their hand them out like AOL oh, well. and no, AOL. not AOL the other one CompuServe no Compu no the, wow. the, there's one other Netscape. not CompuServe no. no oh Earthlink er, Earthlink no not Earthlink oh. That's Netscape did didn't they Netscape no it was a browser it was a browser Netscape was a browser but not ne AOL not CompuServe not Earthlink uh, oh God what was the what? name no? huh what were you talking about? Then what? what? The, the um, original email servers. Yeah, the e email. Yeah. Oh. I used to get one of those. A they, I wouldn't you know what I'm talking about, about, right, AOL? Kevin? See, yeah. There was. Pac no, it wasn't Pac Bell. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Well, I know CompuServe and Earth, uh, CompuServe and AOL used to give disks all the time. Yeah. yeah, but this was a company that every time we turn around, they were sending you a disk. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, Earthling, uh, AOL did that. AOL did it. Yeah. Uh, was it? I'm I'm trying to remember now. Oh mm. boy, it had a weird name too. Oh well, maybe somebody can yeah, tell me remember. here. Is anybody online saying it? Maybe. No, no. Well, I suggested AOL is the only one I see that. Well, AOL, you know where AOL screwed up. It took them forever to get their system to go in, onto the internet. Yeah. 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 You remember? When everybody else was getting onto the internet, they weren't. I think CompuServe was on the internet, you know. You got mail. Y yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just remember some name like Trinity or something. It's not Trinity, but something that <laughs> was a name like that. Um, but uh, what was your first email, uh, uh, Charlie? Prodigy. 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 Yeah. That's that it. One. Yeah. Yeah. Prodigy. Always the discs. Yeah. Ding, 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 you, ding. Yeah. You turn. Yeah, right. You turn every time you turn around. You, you go down the mail. There were some discs from and AOL. Then did the same thing. You know, and. Uh, you know, it's a great story. I got to tell you a great story about my friend Shecky. Um, they were building the the big uh, Time Warner building in Columbus Circle. Big, tall, huge, gigantic building. And uh, at the time, Time Warner got bought or merged with AOL. So it became the time the Time Warner or the Time. Warner AOL building. Mm -hmm. So as they were building it, they had the sign out front, Time mm -hmm. Warner AOL, right? And or, or maybe it was even AOL Time Warner is what it said. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Shecky went over with a friend of his and they're looking at the building and Shecky said to him, I make you a bet that by the time this place opens its doors, AOL isn't on the building any longer. Oh. He called it right. When they opened mm -hmm. it up, there was an AOL on the front yeah. of the building. Now, you Corbin remember... also huh? mentions MindSpring. I, that was one of my first emails. MindSpring. Do you know that was owned by Scientology? <laughs> that was my that was my first wow. email. Yeah, yeah, well, that was owned by Scientology. God, I didn't know that, and I'm glad yeah. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I think MindSpring was, yeah. Yeah, MindSpring. I, that was my first email. What, what does AOL stand for? 
America, America Online. Online. Learned something new today. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. I got bail. Put you, that you, in your diary. Alan got did bail. Tell something. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah. it, uh, it, it just was, uh, it was amazing what they were doing. Just amazing. And it's amazing that all those companies, CompuServe doesn't exist any longer. Uh, what do you call Prodigy doesn't uh, exist any longer. Mm -hmm. Who else doesn't? Most of them don't. AOL, oh, I the AOL, I think, still has some kind of a presence online. Yeah, but, I but, know a couple of people that that's their okay. email address. It says that some people still, there are 1.5 million people still paying $9.99 or up to $14.99 a month to AOL. Still, wow. right now. Really? One wow. point, yeah, to keep their email address. The only reason I got an email address from them, I had one for a short yep, time, is it was free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the same thing with Hotmail. It's free. That's why I chose that one. Yeah, I don't remember I, those those was, phones that you had to call. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Hotmail is uh, is Google. Yeah. No. Huh? No, no, Hotmail. Hotmail is Microsoft. Like over at Microsoft. Huh. Yeah. Hotmail is not Microsoft. Yeah. I think it, it's Outlook. It's always been Microsoft. Oh no, Gmail. Excuse me, Gmail. Gmail. Yeah. Gmail. Yeah. Gmail is Google. Yeah. And you know, Yahoo tried to do them one better with Ymail. I had a yeah. Ymail address for a while, and they folded that up. Yeah. Ymail. Well, because you want to get some. No. <laughs> uh, Pine Spring was Scientology. Why? I think MindSpring was Scientology, yeah. Got their fingers in everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, wait, you, you know who, you know, you, what I hate, the thing that I hate, and I, I get mail from all the time, <coughs> Marjorie signed me up once for it. And that was um, um, uh, Ancestry.com. You know who owns Ancestry? Yeah, the Mormons, right? The Mormon, Mormon Church. Yeah. They used to, they created the system because they wanted to be able to check if all their people were legitimately, could be Mormons because of their background or whatever. And uh, uh, I, I, when I found that out, it made me feel uncomfortable. And then yeah, it turned I've out. Never, that's why I've never done that. Then, I, then it turned out they were selling your information to the Chinese. Yeah. Well, of course, everybody Which does. made me doubly uncomfortable. And to this day, I get stuff from them. And they, it goes something like this. Uh, hey, we have another lead for you on an ancestor. And then you click on it and it says, if you give us twenty nine ninety five, we'll tell you who it is. <laughs> no, no. Huh? Really, you got to pay for it? The, oh, the initially, no. you had to pay like 79 bucks and send them your spit. I thought, yeah, I thought that's what you had to pay for. Oh, that's the DNA, yeah, that's the DNA. Yeah, but if you want, if you want more than just the basic thing, you know what they came up with? You know what my basic thing was that they found out? They, I, they sent me my my stats, that's and it turns out <laughs> that I am European Jew. Ooh, wow! Wow! God, uh, I didn't, five. I didn't, you know, <laughs> that might have been worth seventy nine ninety five if I thought oh. I was a Catholic, okay? But, it, I, I, you know. And, and wanted actually in, black. In six crimes in New York. What? <laughs> DNA is, the, those DNA things mess things up sometimes. They do send that information to law enforcement. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. do. And then the cops look at it and go, oh. This guy, we want him in six murders or something like that, and and then they find out later on the DNA company screwed up. Well, DNA can screw up because it can be it can be adulterated. DNA company didn't do the lab work right or something yeah. for a while. Yeah, look what happened to OJ. He got screwed over. Yeah. That... Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Oh gee. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. So I was, when I first got on the internet, I first had somebody, I don't know who dial up. And then I was at Fremont, uh, Sunnyvale, and some place in the middle of the country became the test markets for a cable company. And I had cable internet. And I was like 50 megabits per second flying compared to dial up. 
And then it was bought out by AT and T, and then they called it AT and T B I for some reason. Wait and minute. then they bought Wait. this Comcast. Fifty megabits. Fifty gigabits. I don't know. No, wait, wait a minute. Wait, are you saying it was fast? Very fast. Well, then it would yeah. be gigabits, not. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not, I don't know. No, he's talking about faster than dial-up. Right. Oh, 50, anything's fast. Yeah. You, you do know. Megabits is flying compared to dial-up. You do, do know. Go drink a coffee while you're waiting for your page to load. But, yeah, really. Uh, uh, believe it or not, my friend Larry Bubbles Brown has dial-up. And he told me that in the San Francisco Bay Area, he was told by the phone company that there are about still 50,000 people, 40,000 people who have dial-up. <laughs> wow. Oh. Brother's brother. Old school. Wow. No. Well, you see, in his apartment house, they didn't wire it for Internet. Hmm. So he still has to use the phone system. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. They have... They have... It, it, you know, the internet can come in on cable or it can come in on yeah. twisted, on twisted. I'm terror. sure, but he hasn't looked into it. Okay. He doesn't want to look into it. You know, he's the one without a smartphone, right? Here's what happened. Well, hold hold on to your, hold on to your skivvies on this one. <laughs> it turns out that his flip phone was going to stop working because they have dropped all the carriers yeah. for that phone. 3G, yeah. Yeah. And, and they, you have to have at least 4G or something like that yeah. now, right? Yeah. That's the basic Two minimum. 3G, we're going away. That's what ours did. So, so he, went to, he went to his local phone store and they said, you know, the phone company said, we'll, we'll treat you to a phone, right? So they said, well, here, we've got this smartphone, you know, with the vintage, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he said, do you have any flip phones left? And they said, we'll see. And they went in the back room and they found one that worked with 4G. <laughs> and he's still using a flip phone. So I've got, I got one. They sent one for my mom. For, with, with not, not even for asking for it. And they sent a flip phone in the mail. A flip phone? Said, yeah, your, your 2G and 3G is not going to work. No, oh. here's the one that's going to work in 5G. Well, and she, they sent her a flip phone. Yeah, and she hadn't used the phone. Well, in four he years. he was told here one you one phone call he, in four years. Here you can have a smartphone for free, and he yeah. took he took the flip phone instead. No, they sent they just sent her a flip phone. I said, what am I going to do with this? And she had passed away by then. When he said, when, oh. yeah. I said I'm just going to go ahead because if you look at her phone bill, I've been paying a phone bill for four years, and it was like two phone calls in four years. <laughs> and I go. She doesn't even use the freaking. Well, when thing. he has to t text something from his phone, and the first oh, and the first letter is a B, yeah. he has to tap yeah, so type one, B one, in. One, two, 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 three, three, yeah, three, four, yeah, four, yeah, four, yeah, four. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember those days. Yeah, I mean, but who who wants to do that? No, my daughter used to be able to do that, not even looking at it. I mean, I agree that that there are certain downsides to. I mean, he may be smart in this respect. That you know, at least he doesn't get spam. Yeah. You know, viruses don't hit him. Well, viruses don't hit him. Yep. You know, he doesn't get calls in the middle of the night trying to sell me uh, yeah, uh, auto automobile auto insurance. Warranty. If nobody's <laughs> using dial-up, it's probably fast now. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. these, these auto warranty people, they they bug me like crazy. Like, oh well, they're gonna do a warranty here, blah 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 blah, and I'm going. Uh, sorry, I don't have a car. I mean, I like wasting their time because I'm, oh, yeah. I'm 82 years old. I have nothing to do with my life. So if these people are going to call me, I may as well play with them for a while, right? Sure, sure. And so I keep them going. Sometimes I keep them going. Yeah, tell me more. Oh, how much will that cost me a month? Oh. <laughs> by the way, and then after about 15 minutes of them telling me all of this, I say, by the way, did I mention that I don't own a car? <laughs> <laughs> Click, <laughs> you know. I, I just love wasting that because it doesn't waste my time. I've got all the time in the world. Well, not all the time in the world, but you know, unless I die of a heart attack while I'm talking to you, I'm still going to be going after this, you know. But uh, you know, so 
I love, I love, I love putting, I love putting them on. Mm. You know, I, I had a friend once who used to do this. They would call, what they would call up, and um, uh, he would then say, they would say, "Are you, you know, are you the person at this place?" And he'd go, "Yes." And uh, would you be interested in insurance? Blah 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 blah. And then he would say to the woman on the line, "What are you wearing?" What do you mean, what am I wearing? I want to know what you're wearing. <laughs> oh, she go, well, I mean, no, I, well, is there a reason why you need to know? Well, I'd li if you're wearing something, I'd like you to take it off. <laughs> and she said, how can you say that? How can you do that? And she gets irate, and he says, hey, you called me. <laughs> Hi, this is Nate Good from point. State Farm. Huh? Yep. Hi, this is Nate from State Farm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, really. you, call, you called me, and uh, they that shut them up pretty good, you know. <laughs> and and I had another friend, Chuck Farnham, who used to work with me in the mornings uh, at, at uh, Live One Hundred Five, and he. It's a lot of times he would get Bible salesmen coming to the door, and when he'd see him <laughs> coming, he'd take his clothes off <laughs> <laughs> and answer the answer the door. And, and they kind of go, well, thank you very much. Bye. You know, so, so much for the Book of Mormon, you know. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, you were I, talking about ancestry a while ago. Alex, a friend of ours, kind of got mm -hmm. us interested in that. And we were over at their house for dinner and we just gave her some basic information like our birthdays and our parents' birthdays and all that kind of stuff. And I just looked when you mentioned it a while ago, and I now have 9,257 relatives on my tree. <laughs> oh, do you? You know, how you? you know how you can really screw that up? You take the cotton thing that you're going to spit, you spit on that, and then wipe it on your friend's toilet seat, and then send it in. <laughs> well, you know, you know what, I'm not though? talking about the DNA. I'm just talking oh, oh, about oh, oh, sorry. Know, people I've added yeah. to my tree from the little green leaves that pop up. I, yeah. dro I drooled into that test tube, okay? Yep. And we sent it back, and Marjorie got a whole thing about, well, here's your family tree. You know, you, you came, she came from, she was a Jew from Europe, too. Uh, and and um, they sent me a thing going, yours didn't work. You're going to have to do it again. <laughs> well, to begin wow. with, it's humiliating enough spitting into a tube, you know? But to have to do it a second time. So I sent it to him a second time. You know, so get the dog to spit into it. Here. I was thinking of peeing in it or something like that. You know. <laughs> but, you know, the thing that prevents you from doing that is the 79 bucks. You know, you don't really want to waste your money on that. So, you know. well, it was on sale a couple of months ago mm -hmm. for 39 did, did you? I know. I know. Cut rate DNA. Yeah. I'm 1% uh, African. Are you? Wow. It yeah. shows too, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. Maybe South African. <laughs> yeah. No, pro probably like North Africa, like Morocco or something. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, you know, mm -hmm. it 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 it's. Uh, uh, I just I I just uh, I just think that bubbles maybe is right. You know, being not getting not buying into this. Uh, technology, although, you know, it has brought us a lot of good things. Like I just was able to write Albert. Did he write back yet? Let's see here. No, he didn't, no, write. He, he didn't write back yet. But uh, anyway, I've looked up some of Bubbles' uh, skits that he's done on Letterman and things like that on YouTube. Yeah, and it's hilarious. He's wonderful. He's hilarious. He's wonderful. Absolutely. He's wonderful. He's one of my favorite comedians. Like I've seen him live, at, like at Rooster Tees a bunch oh, of times. He is hilarious. Yeah. No, I uh, really, I, and I love him dearly, and I think he's one of the funniest <laughs> comics I've ever known. He's hilarious. You know? He's absolutely hilarious. Yeah. I my favorite, my favorite line he does though is, "I, I don't worry about somebody stealing my, uh, stealing my identity. That that they would have no life." Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Well, that's his, that's his opening line for his act. I, I, you know? oh, I love, I love where he says on in his YouTube thing on Letterman. He says, "Oh, my day's going horrible." He says, "I get pulled over by the highway patrol," and the cop says, "Do you know why I pulled you over?" And he says, "Because I'm black." And then a few <laughs> seconds later, after the laughing died down, he says. Those nightsticks hurt like hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was so anyway, we got to go. Jack Bishop is going to do his show next. Oops. Hoping. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> is he going to do it on Zoom? No. 
No, no, he's going to oh. do it on Skype. Well, hmm. I don't know that. Oh, shut up. That was <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much, uh, Kevin, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much, Josh. I know you were a little tired tonight, but nice of you to show up anyway. No uh, and uh, we got to find something, a show for you to do. I don't know where, how, or whatever. Yeah. We'll figure something out. Take my show, please. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Charlie Wallace, thank you so much. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Nunn, Vernon Nunn, thank you. Thank you. Hey, you know, you haven't said a word tonight, Jeff. Oh, yeah. He, he talked a couple of times. Oh, did he yeah. really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, you know, some nights you talk, some nights you yeah, don't. It's a yeah. And uh, thank you very much, Alan, and thank you very much, Ray. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, another one will form next Wednesday. Uh, I'll see you again on Monday at 4 o'clock for the pop-up show. Jack Bishop is next over most of the same station with the intersection. Yes, he's back again. And you can call him using Skype with the name GabNet Live. In the meantime, I'll see you again uh, on Monday. And then I'll see you again Wednesday at 1030, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, I like to say, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>